Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The surprise attack on the Pacific Fleet that Sunday morning crippled the once proud Pacific Fleet. Seventeen ships were damaged that day, including eight battleships sunk or severely damaged. More jarring to Americans, however, were the 2,403 countrymen who lost their lives. Illinois native, Seaman Charles Sahey, was fresh out of Navy boot camp at Great Lakes Naval Training Center when he was sent to the USS Nevada in late 1940, then birthed in Bremerton, Washington. One year later, on December 7th, the USS Nevada was anchored along Battleship Row in Pearl Harbor. Sahey was in the enlisted man's head when the attack began. I had breakfast. At 7.30, I went to the head. After head, washed up. Then uh, the four or five of us in the head uh, sitting, sitting around, and all of a sudden, the jar, the boom. I saw oh, that there's practicing firing in the harbor, there's shooting. We thought. So then I ran to my battle station. And, oh my God, it's going unbelievable. Unbelievable. I have never fully understood the feeling, the shock. Uh, what, what the hell is happening? Who are they? The events of December 7th haunt Sehi to this day. He found it much easier to write down his memories than to speak about them. Here is his account of what happened next. I ran to my battle station, which was number four after searchlight, located high up on the main mast. Already incoming Japanese planes were strafing the exposed deck areas with machine gun bullets, and the color guard and band members were scattering for safety. All I could do was watch this terrible, alarming, unbelievable nightmare unfold before my eyes. An aerial torpedo launched from one of the Japanese planes soon struck in the Nevada on the port side, causing the ship to lurch violently upward and shudder. The Nevada, with some of its boilers already lit on standby, got up enough steam pressure to get underway. As the ship slowly eased its way into the channel, passing the Arizona, a tremendous fiery explosion ripped the Arizona apart showering the open deck crews of the Nevada with hot, searing metallic debris, burning many of them to their death. I watched a second wave of high-level and dive bombers now concentrating their efforts on the Nevada as we slowly proceeded up the channel and heard cheers coming from the crews of other ships encouraging us onward. Although there were many near misses indicated by numerous water spouts, numerous bombs made their mark, and severely damaged the forecastle, bridge, and the boat deck area. The Nevada was given orders to beach itself so as to avoid blocking the channel to prevent other ships from entering or leaving. As the Nevada passed by a dry dock, the destroyer, Shaw, moored nearby, blew up by a direct hit, showering the decks of the Nevada with flaming metallic fragments. Our ship finally came to rest assisted by two tugs at Wapia Point. The Nevada now lay bow low aground. Before Pearl Harbor, Americans were determined to keep out of other people's war. After the attack, the nation was instantly united in the cause. Nothing less than total victory over the forces of oppression, the Nazis, the fascists, and the Japanese. 